Hi, I'm Emma. This is the part of the assessment where I was having a look to see how Ben was doing with actual reading, and not only decoding, but also reading for fluency and comprehension. So I've just gone through the session, a part of the session which is I'm assessing his spelling ability, his phonemic awareness, and his ability to hear those speech sounds and put them down on paper. Um, but now, and I've also given tips as to what he needs to do in class to improve his spelling. But now I'm going to go over, I'm just going to assess where he is on his decoding, and then I'm going to get a book out so that he's actually decoding for comprehension, because I want to check on his visual imagery. If you're learning phonics and learning the sound picks and not at the same time as you're scaffolding using readers so they're able to actually put these into meaningful reading activities, the children won't read. They have to be able to put their knowledge on into practice. So please don't use PM readers and things like that because that will stop them actually doing this. Here are the high frequency words they learn. Children shouldn't be learning sight words. We only have to learn sight words when we're using PM readers because children can't read them otherwise. Create an SSP book tier. But again, if your budget is low, you don't have to have hard copy books. We're moving into a, an age where children are going to be reading only on e-readers, on iPads, on their phones and whatever. We need a school to keep up with technology and to keep up with the moving world and the world that children are actually living in. Children, unfortunately, aren't going to be picking up hard copy books to read. And we know at the moment that children are not in, in Australia are not equating reading with pleasure. And I'm not surprised they're not enjoying it. So SSP, we're in the middle of creating apps and e-readers and things to read where um, it's interactive so that the boys can have really fun, exciting things to read that they want to. But they follow the SSP order. Children have to have the sound picks in meaningful context so that they can actually go from decoders to readers. And if we don't give them reading material where they can do that, then we're doing them a really great disservice. And if cost is your, your, your stumbling block, because you think you've got to get hard copy readers, please do contact me and I can send you a USB that you can share with parents and parents can use them on laptops. So children can read on iPads and whatever, on computers, just from what is on the USB and it doesn't cost you anything except for the cost of the USB. It doesn't cost a parent anything except for the cost of the USB, but it means every single child in your school can progress through at their level and be reading by six. And if you've got older children, the only way to get them reading, as you'll see with this child now, is to get them scaffolders readers so they get a chance to learn the code and also to practice reading and also to practice visual imagery and to be able to comprehend. So this is everything. Every single spelling for every single word, this is, this is everything on here. Yeah, so this is why your mummy's been going through... Where's the green level gone? This is why your mum's been going through sat pin and whatever, because she's starting to build up, and I'll give you those a little present. Um, now, and so what we do is, so we build up with sat pin, but because you can hear them, you're hearing the sounds really, really well, now we've just got to make sure we go through them all and we, do, we practice reading with them as well, okay? So on your spelling, I want somebody to do that, to be going along and just say, oh, yummy, just check which is the picture for mm and change it. Yep. So it doesn't have to be a big palaver, it doesn't have to be, you know, whatever, yes. just take the odd yep. word, get him to do it, write it a couple of times, and as he writes it a couple of times, he does the yummy. And it doesn't worry about the neatness of no. the... No, and in fact, if you could do it faster... I was going to say, that's what he's worried about, because his handwriting hasn't been neat, so that yeah. it's been a focus on trying to get his handwriting neat. Okay. So... I would rather us home. focus on you being able to write. Yep. Yes? Even if it, it, it'll all come together, so the more you write and whatever, it will become neat. Or you might have some sessions where you do think, right, this is going to be really, really neat. But then you have other times where you think, no, no, I just want to get it down. And if you're having to go, e, uh, it, you forget the bit that you sound, you know, you forget it, don't you? So on the spelling, I want us to learn all the sound picks. And I want really to work out how we can get someone in your class that every now and again just sits with you to say, oh, just change this, mm, who understands where to show you so she doesn't have to tell you. Because it's much better if you can work it out. Um, now, read some of those words for me. Jam. How do you know it's jam? Because it's, um, it has a J -A -M -M. Wow, what are the sounds? What do you say when you say jam? Do you say J-A-M? I'm going to go and get a pot of J-A-M. Yes, that's right, because that's what it is when we're speaking. The only reason that we need all of this is just to be able to put talking on paper. So this isn't, isn't really J-A-M, it's really jam. Isn't it? So this is really j and that's why I say to all the schools, we don't need to know it's a J or an A in it because that doesn't help us. But you knew that, so jam. Van. 
Queen <gasps> Box Yo Happy Fly Zoo Buzz Quit Chips Ship I think that was pretty amazing. I think that was pretty amazing. And they are actually purple level sound picks. <laughs>
well actually a mistake to me is just one more way of finding out what I have to do until I get to the right one. Yeah? And I love mistakes. You know if I see a spelling test and I've got there's ten things that are wrong on the somebody's spelling test, I love that because you know what it shows me? It shows which bits we still need to learn. Yeah? I love mistakes. They could, they're the only way that we learn. So what about this? What about this one? Right. How did you know that? Because Yes, well done, R A. So the A and the I there is a picture for A. Wow, rain. What about this one? So you just said eight. Now if you go her eight there, does that sound right? Hate. Well, it could, there is a word hate, but actually then that so that must also be an I. So when we learn in the yellow level, we learn that the E I G H. Look at that there. The E I G H could be an A. Could represent an A. Could be an, a picture for A, or it could be a picture for I. the levels you see because then you learn these skills it's not a big shock when you come to it because you've actually been learning them as you're going along i think do you know on this oh i think you're doing brilliantly so i am now going to so you've done some purple level words and you've done some yellow level words well i knew you'd have so what would that word be Sense. yes how did you know that why is it not count um because um that well, actually, do you know? I know I can just I can do it, I can describe it. That's actually cent because cent is a word. I go and spend ten cents, and actually, if that was Kent, there isn't a word in the English language Kent with that one with that picture. Um, but there is a Kent because it's somewhere I in England where I used to live, but that's with a K. It's a different one. You know these ones, and then we go up to the blue level, and that's this one. Your brain did exactly what it's supposed to do then. Your brain actually was looking ahead and it saw the T and the W and the O. And it thought, oh, could it be two? And then it changed it and shuffled it around and thought, no, it's toe. And that's why when you go two, 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 that whatever, that's that's what I mean about your oh, that's the one. And you got there. Fantastic. What's this one? That's an oi sound. Oil? Yes. Now this one here is actually air. Hair? Hair, well done. Purse? Yes. So because it's not quite so confident on the blue level, which is recognised in those sound picks we just saw there, some diagraphs and what have you, um, he's, br he's having to slow down to actually decode the word, whereas before, because his brain recognised them, was blending, it was as if he was um, just you know, reeling each word off, whereas now he's having to slow down about a bit. But this is why we need to make sure that readers have words in them that the children, for 80% of the time, can just reel them off and actually read and focus on the comprehension. If you use PM readers and things like that, they will constantly stumble because you're giving them parts of the code they haven't learnt yet. So you will actually slow down the reading process. And that's what's happened with this child. That is amazing. So what I want you to do, and all of these are on slide share, I just want you to, on the level, so you're, I think you're doing really, really well, certainly on the blue level, I think you're really ready to be on the blue level. So on the blue level, I want you to be doing words that mummy can think of, all the words you can think of, that are made up of any of these, and they can be made up of those as well, because you, you don't know those. So it could be anything. She could try and trick you. So she might do, you know, she might do, when she's doing one with a, O W. She might do that. Cow, toe. Yes. So you weren't tricked at all, were you? You knew that was our, and then there it's O, didn't you? Now this is why vocab knowledge is so important. So that when children are reading words, they know what the word is. Now he's doing it in his head. But what would happen is the child might go cow, 
to ow and then if they say tau and they don't think oh that's not a word and then they can check think oh well what could it be but this is also why reading for fluency and comprehension is so important because they can get the meaning of the text because they're understanding what they're reading so that's when the brain will also change the word or how they pronounce the word either to themselves or orally or whatever it changes the meaning of what they're reading because we can't teach phonics in isolation we also can't teach children just words in isolation or again it doesn't really help the whole brain but think of all the processes that are going on when you look at cow and toe to change that and understand why it's different now what books are you reading at school um, okay pm readers pm readers yeah i don't think they're all pm readers but they're leveled according to that. okay and i should have asked you to bring one but not to worry Okay, um, what I want you to do first of all, hold on, oh, could you keep an eye on the time for me? And, okay, right, and we're running out, this is finished. Now this is a child who's actually struggling with his reading and spelling and really because um, a lot of the school systems are set up um, not really for learning differences, they're, they're set up to meet the middle of the, the, the class really. So the way that he needed to be taught, um, he just wasn't being taught like that and I don't blame teachers, it's like a training and um, evidence based strategies and what have you. But basically his mum found SSP and has been doing it as, at home. So this is the first time I've ever met him and because of the work he's been doing he's actually no longer has any problems. He just needs to go through the code systematically along with really good readers that help him practice what he's been learning. And when I say readers, I mean reading material that's scaffolded. So they build up so that they're developing the fluency and comprehension because they've only got the sound picks that they, they know and they're learning. So they can do it rapidly. And they build up and they build up until the blue level, which is when they're virtually fluent. So, and we can do that in prep. If we start right from the beginning and teach the concepts and skills really easily and simply, we can do that in prep. It doesn't usually take more than a couple of terms to get every brain wired for reading and spelling. And and then it's a case like with this child, because of the work he's done with his mum, it's just moving him along the readers and giving him the skills to understand when he's spelling words, how to find the different variations, when to recognise if it's right or, or if it looks right or it doesn't, um, and how to check. It really can be simple teaching children to read and spell. Unfortunately, we, we set things up often to make it more difficult for them. And that's really what SSP is about, it's just about keeping it simple. And I think you've been doing a fantastic job because if he'd come to me first of all, I'd think, oh well, we're, you know, we've got all the things, but a yep. lot of that will be what you've been doing at home with him. Yep. To to because it's it is modifying his brain. It's getting the the speech sound to the paper. I think it's surprising him too, isn't it? Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like like yeah. this toe and cat. Yeah. That just well, came that's out. That's fantastic. Yes, because most children, if I went like that and I showed them that, they'd be stuck. But your brain is working it out. So I think you've actually got a really good reading and spelling brain. I think we've just got to shift how you're, what you're learning and keep learning more at home. And also the teachers would keep supporting it as well. And I think you'd be fantastic. Yeah? So the spelling, what we said is we want to learn all the sound picks. And, and if, you can, if you can have somebody there that's just looking at some of them as you're going through. And also that they understand that it's not a case of changing the whole word. They just need to show you which part needs to change. Because on most of them, like yummy, you've got, actually, that's a really difficult bit, the Y for, y, for E, yum E. Most people would put an E or two E's or whatever. So you knew it was yummy. The only thing was we just needed to change that one. Yeah, so that's all I want them to do is change that. So the reading. So what I want you to do, first of all, is, and I know you're going to, you might think this is really easy, I don't know. I am going to actually just cover up the pictures. So that we're not having to have anything else that we don't need for the minute. Because all you need if you're a reader is this, isn't it? Because if you can read this, you don't need the pictures. The pictures are nice afterwards. But because you can see it in your mind, can't you? So let's just have a look here. So you read what you... You tell me if you can read this, because I don't know if you can or not. Liz and Raj went up into the... Love. Well done, right, hold on a second. Now, when we don't know a word, we don't know how to say it, and I do this with teachers all the time, I show them words that they don't know, and then they say it wrong, okay? So oh, that's where, that's called verbal in, um, vocab knowledge. So it's just, if you don't know a word, how would you know how, it, how it's pronounced? There's nothing wrong with your reading and spelling, you just don't know, it's a new word. So this actually is Raj, can you say that? Raj. Raj, well done, so Liz and Raj went up, in, uh, up the loft. Where did they go? Up. 
<gasps> Close your eyes. Have a think. What do you think Liz looks like? She might. Fantastic. What about Raj? Uh, I think you thought brown skin because of Raj. It sounds like a um, an Indian name, don't you think? I have a friend named Raj. Do you? Well, do you know my my step, my boy's got brown skin, but that's because he's from the Caribbean. Not one is from England, but but uh, not from India. But he's got brown skin as well. So let's have a look. So Liz and Raj went up to the loft. Liz helped Raj. Hold on a second. Roger. Just check if you're... Wait, because I think what happened there is your brain went so fast that it actually looked at that and thought it was helped. So just read that again. Help Raj's hand. Raj held the lamp up. Well done. And the thing is, we don't want to read too fast, because otherwise you'll forget what you, what happened. Because the thing isn't, it doesn't matter about reading fast, that's not what makes somebody a good reader. What makes somebody a good reader is they, if they understand what they're reading, yeah? So even if they do it really slowly, it's like my mum, we both read all the time. She's just been over from England, she's got, just got, went back yesterday. Um, but when she reads, she reads so slowly, but she understands it and everything. Whereas I read so fast that often I make mistakes, as you see on the Facebook page when I'm writing. <laughs> I write and I read so quickly that my brain is there and my hand's still here and whatever yeah so we want to kind of wait up so that you're reading at the night at a nice pace but also so you can understand now i've just been talking so tell me what we just read um we read um did you see anything else you, what was the first thing you saw in your head you were describing it to me um and what was her name the other girl Liz? yes and what color hair did you say she had um, brown. Brown hair. So listen, Raj, and what did they do? They held hands. <gasps> do you know, I can't remember. <laughs> Let's have a look. Wow, you remember more than me. I couldn't remember at all. Oh, and mummy couldn't either. <laughs> that's fantastic. And what happens is if you get the text, the, this, the text, that's just the print. If you get this that you can read, you don't have to keep stopping and starting, then that's what happens. You can, because your brain's not having to work so hard at the words, you can actually visualise. But that's what I want you to do with mum, is read it. And even after a sentence, you might stop, close your eyes, and think about what just happened in that sentence, and then carry on. Okay? So now this one, I want you to read it to yourself. Okay, and you might stop at the end of the sentence, just close your eyes and think, what did I just read, what did it look like, whatever, because you've got no picture, so you don't know. So start from there for me, close it, and just do it to yourself. So you point to the words as you're doing it, I don't need to point to them. Bum. And wait to yourself, I don't want to hear, just want to do it in your head. So tell me what happened because I can't see it's upside down. Um, well, they um, picked up a box and they opened it and the elf was in there. Wow. And when you were reading it, did you understand that? Because that was fantastic because you know what, you can see the pictures. So if you can't read this, and reading doesn't mean just knowing what the sound bits are, it means understanding what those words are, then, well, you were just reading that. So now let's have a look what the author wanted us to have a look at. Oh, look at this. So Liz has got brown skin. And there's Raj. And was there anything in there that's different than you thought of? Um, the um, house and the, um, the red t-shirt. And... Fantastic. Which means that you've got good visual imagery as well. Brilliant. So we're just, all we're doing now with SSP is bring it all together. Simple as that. Fantastic. I'm going to do it again. So this time, close up. Just one sentence, uh, just up to the full stop. So just read the sentence yourself, and then and then close your eyes and visualize it, and then do the next sentence. Close your eyes. Visualize, and then carry on. Close your eyes. After every sentence. Just for a second, that's it. Got it? Got an idea? Let me ask you a question. When the elf sat on the box, what did he do? He said, I'm the last elf. <gasps> did he? So how do you think he felt? Sad. He did. And did he do anything? There's, there's something trickling down him. 
Yes, yeah, so he wept, didn't he? Well done, so you actually said the word sad. You said, I am the last out. Oh, so you understood what you're reading, yeah? And that's all we need to do. So this is why I want you to get your library, which is your local library. Burley Waters. Yes. And they've sent it off to... Brilliant. Yep. So yeah, I that's what I want in every... So that regardless of what the school's doing, you can go through. Because then we can yep. not only use the... Because the sound picks all link with SSP. Yes. Yep. So we're not only learning that... Well, she's already there. He already knows. He's up to the blue level. So, but it means that he can actually... Um, he doesn't have to stumble like you do in PMs and yes. things like that. In which case, how can you understand it if, yep. if you're stumbling? Like if I gave you a... Or me, you know, one of my sister's books, which is the scientific, whatever. After the first page line, I'd be like, what? Mm. You know, it's so complicated. So we want you to go through this. So you can do what you did just, to, just then, which was fantastic. And I'm going to have to dash on. My son's going to go, ah! Um, yes, I just switched off. So the work this mum's been doing with her son is just amazing. It's just fantastic. I'm so proud of them both. Um, they also showed me uh, the... Um, which is the heart of the SSP approach, which is about fun and enjoyment. What's the point in learning to read if you don't love to read? And I think a lot of the ways that we're taught to read in, in Australia and other countries actually stops the love and the passion or whatever. It just um, it prevents children from really loving to read and spell. So want to get that back again. Um, but th they showed me at the end of the session a game that they played because he likes footy. So they had a game that they've played and every time they got the sound picks, he got a, another shot um, until he got a goal. Anyway, I'd, I'll try to see if I can post the picture on Facebook. Uh, please do join me on Facebook. Everything I do virtually is free. I'm trying to just help parents as, often, as much as I can so all the resources you see they're all available for free um, I do do school training which is what covers the, the school costs and I do online training whatever but um, for children and parents for the most part it's free thanks for joining me and well done again Ben